Hi everyone, it's Andrew Fazekas, the Night Sky Guy. Welcome to this week's show for February 15th, 2021. I hope you're doing well. This week is a busy week. We've got, uh, of course, the big news, Mars in our skies, and we're visiting Mars as well with, of course, three missions. And this week is the granddaddy of all mission, NASA's Perseverance rover. We've got uh, a whole bunch of things, so why don't we dive right in? So here we are again, welcome. Uh, we've got the sky set up for February 15th, uh, 2021. Uh, of course, the sky uh, in terms of constellations and stars pretty much is the same throughout the week. The only big difference is, of course, is the moon traveling in front of the constellations. And that creates uh, different things that you can see clearly uh, with in terms of the timing or the moon pointing the way to certain things. So here you can see the crescent moon, the waxing crescent moon is visible in the southwest sky on February 15th. If you're watching this on Monday of uh, the 15th, that is where the moon is located currently. Uh, and it's in a perfect alignment with two other planets, Uranus and Mars, two planets right there in a lineup. And of course, Neptune way low in the southwest skies. And again, this is after darkness falls local wherever you are around the world so that is the lineup but what's particularly interesting i wanted to focus in on earlier this week since the moon will be setting uh by mid-evening it leaves behind a darker sky and this is still a great opportunity to see certain things that are beyond the solar system and the one i want you to take a look at perhaps earlier in the week perhaps on monday the 15th is the constellation auriga the charioteer which is part of the, um, the group of constellations that help form the great hexagon. We've talked about this for the last few weeks in Hexagon. If you've missed my videos, I've got a special explainer video on the hexagon. I'll put a link in the comment section, whether you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook, I'll have a link in there for the hexagon explainer. But moving forward with that is one of the points of the hexagon is marked by this brilliant bright star called Capella. Now Capella is, is very easy to see, even if you're stuck in light polluted cities. It's a bright star. It's uh, something that um, is only 42 light years away. It's got this orangey yellowish hue, very distinctive coloration. It's not pure white, not blue, definitely has that yellowish orangish tinge and uh it is the brightest star in the constellation Auriga, and it's shining very high and bright uh this time of the year in the south uh southern part of the skies if i move it towards uh southwest part of the sky i should say this time of the year maybe in the west more uh depending on the time of the night that you're seeing it and where you are in in the world but it's very very evident and it, like i said it marks one of the points in the hexagon now what's interesting if we zoom in you'll notice that the um the constellation itself kind of has a a kind of little house a childlike house kind of uh pattern to it so you can see here the top star here and then there's another star here and then you've got capella marks off kind of a typical top of a house like a childlike drawing of a house and then below is the body of the house uh, marked off again so these four stars also mark off the body of uh, origa the charioteer now what's very interesting i'm going to try to show um these very interesting object now they're inside this constellation origa inside this house-like design there are a number of um clusterings of stars associations of stars and this is really what's really one of them is particularly interesting and it's just near the the arm just on the elbow of uh of origa the charioteer it's called m37 m37 is a beautiful open cluster and I'm gonna show you what it uh, looks like. Let me bring up a nice 
photograph of it. This is a, a photograph of M37, an open cluster in Auriga. I want you to try to see if you can find it. It's something that's particularly really easy to see with binoculars. Te small telescope will bring a view more similar to what you're seeing here. Of course, this is an ex a long exposure photograph. It kind of goes into a little bit more depth and showing more of the stars. But there are a few dozen stars that are visible to uh, a small telescope and even binoculars shows it. And it really is a, a beautiful open cluster. It's Messier, it's on the Messier list, which is 110 of the most amazing deep sky objects that are visible to backyard sky watchers. And I highly recommend M37. It's really easy to see. And what's cool is that it's 4.7 thousand light years away. So 4,700 light years away. We're looking back in time 4,700 years when you're looking at M37. Now there's another uh, M36. We have this clustering of star clusters, this huddling together of it. Another one inside the uh, shape again of this primitive kind of childlike house-like drawing of, of a, a pattern of stars we call Auriga. That's part of the ancient Greco-Roman constellations. And M36 is another beautiful open cust cluster. Again, 4,300 light years away. Here's a photograph of it, beautiful. M36, it's called. It's also known as the pinwheel cluster because it kind of, if you look at it close up, kind of has this pinwheel-like configuration. If you look closely, uh, this would be something kind of neat to see. So check that out if you can. That would be something really, really cool if you can uh, try to see it. So when we're looking at Auriga, there are other, uh, there's another beautiful uh, star cluster called the starfish cluster. This one is uh, M th also known as M38, Messier 38. So we have Messier 36, 37, and 38 now inside uh, Auriga. And this is what it looks like, M38. Beautiful star cluster as well. So you've got three star clusters in Auriga to watch for, and M38, the starfish cluster, is 4,600 light years away. So you've got the pinwheel, uh, starfish, pinwheel, and M37 to look at in Auriga. So check that out anytime this week. I'm talking to you on Monday, February 15th. Maybe perhaps you'll be able to see it tonight or Tuesday night, February 16th. But if we do move over to uh, the next night, February 16th, Tuesday, and we zoom out, you'll notice, let me see if I can get this there, the moon will be tucked underneath, a little bit fatter in its, in, in its crescent, but what's really neat is that the moon will be, let me just make it a little bit, zoom in on it. You can see it's a beautiful crescent in the west, and it will be just underneath Uranus the second to last major planet in the solar system. And by Wednesday, February 17th, it'll be very close to Uranus. Now, I would say Wednesday, February 17th, is a great opportunity to hunt down Uranus. Now, Uranus looks like, just like what you see here, as a small, faint, greenish colored disk. And just remember that when you're looking at Uranus, you're looking at something that's over 3 billion kilometers away. It's amazing that we can see it. Now, it's technically visible to the naked eye because its magnitude right now, 5.8, which makes it just on the cusp of being technically visible to the naked eye. But most of us won't be able to find it with the naked eye because we live under, as I've said, light polluted conditions, right? Most of us are living in suburbs near or inside large cities, small cities and any light pollution will really uh, mask the visibility of Uranus. So I would say try it with binoculars. With that, it's easy. Binoculars and telescope, it is a cinch to see uh, Uranus, even if within city limits. Look for that green disk, and the moon will help guide you on Wednesday, February 17th. So do try that out, looking for Uranus. Then we move over to the day I think many of us are waiting is, uh, of course, um, uh, February 18th, Thursday. Thursday night, 
the moon, uh, waxing crescent moon, will be next to Mars, this brilliant orange star. It will be huddling high in the southwestern sky. It'll be very easily visible. You can see it right there. There's the moon. There is Mars. Just a beautiful sight, the two coming together. They're only going to be about four degrees apart for many of us around the world. Some of us, depending on when you get darkness falling, where you are in the world, they might be farther apart or a little bit closer. The closest they will get is about four degrees. How close together that is? Well, it, it, it really is amazing to think. I mean, of course, the two objects are very far apart. You have to remember that uh, the moon is only 1.3 light seconds away. That means it takes light 1.3 seconds from the moon to reach your eye. Mars, however, is 11 seconds away. That's because Mars is much farther away. Mars is currently about 11 light minutes away, which means it's over 200 kilometers, million, sorry, million, 200 million kilometers. Blows my mind, I know. I mean, 200 million kilometers away from Earth. So it takes light over 11 minutes to reach your eye. So think of this. We've got the Perseverance rover, right, that is going to be visiting, uh, landing on the surface of Mars on Thursday, February 18th. It'll happen at 3.55 p.m. Eastern Time. That is when the rover is uh, going to be landing. I am going to be live streaming this. So you guys, if you're really interested, stay tuned to my channel. I'll be uh, having a link directly to NASA live stream. I'll be providing some commentary, listening in. It's a great watch party that we can have together. I hope you can join me, all my sky watching friends out there, and we'll watch, hopefully, successful landing of the Perseverance rover, this one-ton, six-wheeled, robotic ambassador of humanity. Uh, landing on the red planet. So it's going to be impressive. It'll be looking for life. Uh, and uh, after it goes through that six minutes of terror, that landing process that is an incredible ballet of, of engineering that has to happen. And if it lands successfully on the surface, it'll start uh, an amazing, lengthy exploration, a journey of, of looking at life, evidence of life on Mars, testing out new technology like a uh, Hel helicopter drone uh, and also being able to make uh, oxygen out of the atmosphere. We'll be testing that. Some really, really cool things. So stay tuned on February 18th. And of course, we can all celebrate this moment by watching for the moon and Mars together in the skies Thursday. Beautiful sight. Here we go. Close up. This is what you'll expect to see. It's, it's really going to be something easy. And you could take a souvenir photograph. If you have your smartphone or your DSLR camera, why not take a beautiful photograph? You can wait until later in the evening as this pair kind of uh, makes its way across the sky. Later in the evening, it'll be closer to the sun uh, where the sun has set hours before in the western part of the sky and it'll make a beautiful pairing close to the horizon so if you wait until the pair goes closer to the horizon in where you are in the west you find a clear view towards the west maybe with some trees or buildings or hills it'll make for a fantastic souvenir snapshot so uh give that a try on thursday february 18th is snapping your own photos and of course i'd love to see them so please do share them uh on my facebook page we'll I'll definitely share uh, a selection of those, uh, some of the nice, nicer ones, I guess, I'll, the ones that really catch my eye. I'll try to share that with all of you guys. So do, do stay tuned to that. So that's Thursday, really, really cool. And then we move over to the end of the week, perhaps by Friday and Saturday, we'll have the moon positioning itself close to the Hyades cluster in basically the face of Taurus the bull constellation. So you've got the beautiful quarter moon that's officially happening uh, on, on Thursday. It'll also be at Apogee, by the way, on Thursday. So when the moon and, 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 and Mars are together, the moon will be officially at its most distance from Earth. 
It actually doesn't have a circular orbit, the moon does. It has a squashed elliptical orbit. So there are times when the moon is a little bit farther away. And that is when it's uh, on Thursday, it will be at its farthest at over 404,000 kilometers away from Earth. So it's slightly farther away. The moon will be uh, at what we call apogee on Thursday. And so on Friday, just after that, uh, after it's reached its quarter phase, after it reaches apogee, it will be positioned in Taurus, the bull constellation. And you'll be able to watch on Saturday as well uh, when the moon will be wedged in the two horns of Taurus, the bull, and will be just above the V shaped pattern of stars we call the Hyades cluster. So do check that out. It's a really beautiful site. And that is going to be on Friday, Saturday, uh, and into Sunday for some of you as well. I'll post sky charts for all of this uh, on my timeline. So whether you're watching on uh, Facebook or YouTube, you'll see links there. Uh, and of course, on Instagram, I'll be taking snapshots of the sky charts as well. So with that, thank you so much for joining in. Of course, if you like this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you uh, also the hit the notification and the like as well. Give me a like for this video as well. I hope you're going to stay safe and healthy and you get some, of course, some good chances to view. And as I always wish all of you, I wish all of you, of course, <laughs> clear skies. Until next week. Bye-bye.